Hello viewers, I hope you're well. Let me start by introducing myself as Erika Mukisa, aka Mama Maisha or Mami Zain. Well, today I just want to talk about children because as a parent, it's my responsibility to watch out for the children, whether they are mine, whether they are not mine, all children are my responsibility as a mother. So there is something that is that has been going on for a very long time. Children are being used for rituals. Children are being sacrificed. And most of these children are being uh, exported to different nations, mostly from poor nations like Africa. So when these children are taken, they, they, they don't have documentations or things talking about them. They are being uh, transported by people of influence, people in high places, people who can corrupt the system, people who have money that can corrupt the system. There are some parents who, some people who are giving birth and selling their children. All those children are either used for ritual or sacrifices. Anyway, if they perform a ritual on a child, it means that child has been sacrificed. And uh, this has not only been discovered by Erika Mukisa, but even the U.S. government is talking about it, like in the video below. In the United States of America that breed children in order to sell them. Mm -hmm. And when they are sold, they come without birth certificates, which means it's easier to kill them and have no one ask where they are. We're also importing children by the plane load. Again, children who have no documentation. It's not just child slavery or child sex abuse. It's also child torture because you have adrenalized blood. You, you have the, the whole blood drinking ceremony of the satanic world. It's also the uh, use of children for harvesting body organs. We'll have the Falun Gong uh, testimony tomorrow. Um, one of the reasons that the Falun Gong are so popular is because they're so healthy uh, so that you can harvest their body organs uh, with, and, get, and get the very best. And then you have ritual ceremonies and ritual murder uh, as well as incidental murder. I have found in my research and preparation for this court and all of the work that will follow that most organizations that end up being um, used to prey on children Oxfam is a recent example. Uh, all of the United Nations organizations, the Boy Scouts of America, all of the child services agencies across the United States of America, they did not start out as organizations to prey on children. But they attract pedophiles. And ultimately, pedophiles end up rising in the ranks and controlling those organizations. So that an organization that initially started out in the service of children becomes an organization that is in fact hunting children. Now, it's my, not my working assumption, but uh, the, the working assumption yet to be proven that the totality of the children disappearing worldwide is toward 8 million people. Toward 8 million children. In the United States of America, the acknowledged number, not counting the children being bred without birth certificates, not counting the children being imported without documentation, is between 600 and 800,000 a year. Now imagine Africa and East Asia and all these other locations. I personally believe that the number we want to try to document is rising well beyond the official figures and we will we have yet to learn what the actual number is okay the other working assumption is how long do these children survive within this system what i am hearing from the witnesses that i've talked to is two years it may be longer it may be four years it may be six years but by and large these children are so abused i mean we're talking rapes by the hour and so forth, that they reach their expiration date uh, within two years. And then they're murdered with impunity, or they're ritually murdered if that's what they've been bred for. So I think we need to document this. No one else has done this before in a systematic manner. This commission is rendering a signal service by seeking to do an overall view in the public interest. I believe that once the public realizes that the government is not protecting their children, at a scale of vulnerability that we can articulate, then everything else about the government is called into question. All right? So for me, 
this is a truly righteous endeavor. And I will end by saying that as much good as it might do to get the British angry, for me, the center of gravity for change is the American public. Because if you can get the American public angry, we will stop supporting dictators overseas. We will close all of our military bases overseas. I am on record as a former CIA uh, operations officer is saying that our thousand bases overseas are not there for national defense. They're there to serve as lily pads for the smuggling of guns, gold, cash, drugs, and small children. So let me say I am proud to be in your company. And I believe that no matter what we do or do not do, it is going to make a difference. God bless you all. Parents, it's our responsibility to watch out for children, whether they are ours or not. All children, Jesus says, let the little children come to me, for such is the kingdom of God. You know, these children are tomorrow's leaders. They are tomorrow's generation. They are the next generation. Many of us are standing today to say no to LGBTQIXYZ because our parents nurtured us well. Our penal code still has outlawed issues to do with homosexuality. But the next thing they're going to tell us is that somebody, somebody has a right, a man has a right to marry another man or a woman has a right to marry a, a woman. What will we, to my women who are married do to do? What is there? If we allow them to take over our lives, we have allowed them for, for, for far too long for them to exploit us and to dehumanize us as human beings. On this, we will say no. If they're going to come up with the travel, what they call restrictions, keep your country, keep your cultures, Keep your nonsense to yourselves. And I'm talking to the West in this case here. It is quite clear from our books that some of these things in LGBTQ are actually outlawed. And therefore, anything associated with those characters cannot be allowed to stand against the morals of the people of Kenya. Whether it's sodomy, whether it's lesbianism, whether it's queerness, whether it is anything that is outward practiced by these characters who say they have human rights. They may have their rights in the private. And I'm sorry, I shiver and shudder when I imagine what they do in private because it is totally repugnant, especially to us Africans. It's also important to condemn those who come with these ideas. And this is why today we celebrate the president of Uganda, Yoweri Museveni, Sometimes it actually appears Idi Amin himself was a saint because these are the things he was condemning those days in spite of being incited by these same Europeans and Americans to kill a few Ugandans. Therefore, we as Africans must stand up. We must stand to be counted. We must tell these Europeans and Americans that for the little money they are enticing us with, I'm told they're even offering relief food to Kenyans so that you can legalize things like this one. They have been approaching our organizations, including the Kenya National Human Rights Commission, offering tokens so that they can promote rights of such characters. Thank heavens, these commissions and these organizations have said no to their little tokens. Let them keep their bad habits in Europe, in America. Let us, as Africans, keep what we consider to be morally upright and suitable for our society. Africa, I am a watcher and I'm a fan of National Geographic, which has documentaries. You see male animals being attracted to females, fighting to death. I have never seen a male animal right, raising huh, to satisfy itself sexually on another male animal. So what are they telling us, Mr. Speaker? How can we then, 2023, admit the gays and lesbians of this world to rule this country? Mr. Speaker, on this seat where I sit from, I am telling people who I represent from Avoco, if you see gays and lesbians, tell them to be wary of me because I'm going to tell you what you are going to do with them. 
so are Kenyans. We cannot allow that, Mr. Speaker. There is no right if you look at the constitution of Kenya and the laws we have in this country to be gay, to be a lesbian, to be transgender, or to be queer, which is what the, the, the Q stands for in LGBTQ. To the contrary, we should read the provisions of Article 45 of the Constitution. First, it places the family at the very heart of the society. In fact, what it says is that the family is the fundamental unit of the society. At sub Article 2 of Article 45, it says only people of opposite gender can marry one another. And that is the law of Kenya. So if we forsake these children and chase the money, we are losing a generation. You might protect your children in the house, your children, your, past, your biological children, but when they grow up, they are going to get married. And the person they get married to is very important. I used to wonder in the Bible why a man like Isaac, when he was of age, the dad had to send somebody to go outside and, and look for a wife for him. I now understand better because it's going to get to a point where parents in, in, in uh, European nations are going to be sending people to come to Africa and look for, for, for wives and husbands for their children because if women are turning to men and men are turning uh, to, to women, it's going to be difficult. Like in the Philippines, there is this video where transgender uh, men, men are turned to women and you, it could be, you could hardly tell that these men were women until they spoke in the male voices. By the way, you in the middle, what's your name? My name is Mariko. What's your real name? Joselito. <laughs> What's your real name? Romeo. I'm Colorado. But they can also speak like women. So it's going to be so, so, so difficult in future to find a wife or husband, a suitable wife or husband for, for our children if we don't watch out now. As it is in schools in um, America and some other nations, a child can identify as a cat and he has a right, he or she has a right to meow. And they put boxes of uh, uh, boxes where they can go to use the bathroom. They put some dust in those boxes. And the child goes, instead of going to the bathroom to help themselves, they go to the box like a cat. Can you imagine that kind of foolishness? And they said that they are queer identity. Now we are seeing kids that are identifying as animals going to school and they are purring instead of answering questions and they meow and the teachers are not allowed to question it because it's considered a queer identity. So you have kids that are going to school and they're saying I'm a cat mm -hmm. and the teachers have to affirm them as a cat. So, it's so not schools just are like the literal, literal zoos now basically. Hello my name is Lindsey Graham and I am a cat. Meow meow. I'm not a woman dressed as a cat. I am a cat. By show of hands, I'm curious, uh, how many of you believe and confess that I'm a cat? Great. I am, by show of hands, I'm curious, how many of you believe that your child or a child from this school would believe that I'm actually a cat? No one. You are right. Why? Because you are not stupid, and these children are not stupid. Truth prevails over imagination. Reality exists. Discernment is innate and something we are biologically wired to have. One look at me, and you know this to be true, I am a woman posing as a cat. You may also think correctly that if I truly believe I'm a cat, I have a mental disorder. If I suffer from a mental disorder, and if I'm unable to discern reality, am I safe to be around children? Would you put me in charge of making critical decisions about the safety and well-being of children and about the direction of their education when I cannot even discern truth from fiction? Confession. I'm not actually a cat, guys, just because I say I am. You've not agreed to or committed to addressing me as a cat simply because I demand it. No tail, whiskers, or outfit makes me a cat. Just like no lipstick, high heels, or long hair makes him a man, a woman. It is just as biologically impossible for me to become a cat as it is for a man to be a woman. 
and you have one job as members of this school board and it's defined as this school board members are responsible for broad forward-thinking minute analysis and decisive action in all areas that affect students and staff in their schools I ask you do you believe that the actions of a grown man playing dress up as a woman affects the students and staff positively or negatively a public school is not the place for social experiments in altered realities or gender ideologies it is not the place to celebrate a grown man with a mental illness dressing as a woman and teaching kids lies children come to school to learn facts and truths about reality including unchanging biological truths about science and nature not to learn that they can change biological realities and become anything they want in the name of diversity what you're actually doing is worse than just lying to our kids you're forcing them to be participants in your lie in your charade you're forcing them to deny what they see with their eyes and you're forcing them to speak lies I ask you again am I a cat and if you say no, then the mindset must be aligned with your discernment across the board. By allowing a falsity to be displayed and paraded around the school, you teach children that truth is not existent, facts are not real, and biology is a lie. You fail at your job, your only job, by confusing children and teaching them untruths and to coddle a grown man playing dress up as a woman. If you were to address me as a cat right now, it's as ridiculous as when you say Miss Bixler and a grown man's voice comes thundering over the... Thank you. And people are taking on all sorts of garbage. People are turning away from God, sincerely speaking. But the most disappointing bit of it is that they are changing a generation. Children are the target. Saints. We need to intercede and pray for our children, for the next generation. When I talk about our children, I don't only talk about Zoe and Zion. I talk about all the children. They need to be prayed for. When you look at the cartoons that they are watching, all these cartoons, most of them are, are, are like used as a means of indoctrinating these children. You're wondering why your children are acting funny. They are so crazy, you know? Every Disney princess is supposed to represent a disorder. Psychologists took a study down yeah. and they said in every Disney princess, there's like a clear disorder that they have. Ariel, if you notice, Ariel has a big ship and there's so much things around her. So she's a hoarder and that's a form of OCD. Is that OCD? Yeah, she has so much stuff in her ship, but mm. she doesn't throw it away. Easy one, Alice from Alice in, Alice Wonderland. in Wonderland. What do you think she has, bro? She sees caterpillars walking around with oh, eyes. Oh, schizophrenia. Schizophrenia. Belle, she was captured and put in a castle, right? So this is called Stockholm Syndrome. That means you fall in love with your captor. She captor, fell in love with the, the bees, bees because he was the only one exactly. there. Exactly. Elsa and Anna, they're really reckless. Oh, Elsa has bipolar. Yes. Elsa <laughs> yes, has yes, bipolar. 100%. Yeah. I, I just thought I would have a fly. Elsa and Anna, warm to cold, bipolar. There are some videos I cannot post on this channel because it will be taken down immediately. I will be banned from, from YouTube, but you can go on my Facebook, Eric Amkisa's testimony. You see some of the videos that uh, this platform is, you know, using to indoctrinate children, send spirits of immorality, spirits of lust, sexual perversion, because most of those uh, videos for children are sponsored by, by pedophiles. So parents, I know we are busy, we are looking for money, but let's watch out for our children. As you watch this video to see how children are being deceived in the cartoons, start re-strategizing and seeing on how best we can raise our children in the fear of the Lord. At the end of this video, I want you to watch a, a, a young girl who has been trained in the ways of the Lord and see and see her future clearly. You know, you can tell a child this future by how they behave when they are young. The child is praying, you know. She's, she's talking to God. She has been nurtured well. So let us re-strategize and see how best we can raise our children. You know, I love you, but Jesus loves you more. I remain Erika Mkisa Kimani, a.k.a. Mama Maisha or Mami Zion. Thank you, Father God, that I'm full of compassion, full of wisdom, and full of cheer. I appreciate, I appreciate, I sleep all night long that you cover me with the blood of Jesus, with the top of my head to the soles of my feet. 
and my toes. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, honey. Have you been blessed? Well, click on that notification bell so that every time we upload, you'll be the first one to know about it. Please share, comment, and subscribe. Let us know whatever you think about everything that we post. If you want to support our ministry, I just want to remind you that we don't go into the comment section asking people for money. You can find the information in our description box. And then also, you can visit us on our website, www.lifeisspiritual.org. If you want to support our foundation, we have a foundation where we do charity and take care of the orphans, the widows, and the elderly. If you want to support our foundation, you can visit us on our website, www.worldshare.com for more information. And then also, you can support through our PayPal account that is running on the screen, SendWave or World Remit through the numbers that are running on the screen. And also, don't forget to get yourself some copies of our books. We have written books entitled Erica Part 1, Seven Years in Hell, Erica Part 2, 18 Years with Lucifer, Erica Part 3, Witchcraft and Spiritual Warfare, Erica Part 4, Death, Hell and Heaven, and The Truth About Money. All our books are available on Amazon, Kindle, and our website www.lifespiritual.org. Both our websites have our books. You can access them. All our books are available on both our websites. For those of you that are in Kenya and would love to order books, you can contact us on those numbers on the screen. From Uganda, our books are available at Uganda Bookshop, Enjoy Bookshop, and Aristoc Bookshops. If you want to follow us on Facebook, we don't ask for money on platforms and avoid con men, but our Facebook channels are Life is Spiritual and Erica Mukisa's Testimonies. Erica Belinda's ministry is no longer my page. It's a hacked page. May God bless you. Thank you so much. Mama Maisha. <laughs>